situation until one of her sick ass uh cronies amber evans jumped in the conversation asking silly questions but, but, but let's said, hold on to that let's hold on to that for a second we, we got i gotta hear because okay. d Devry hasn't ahead, been bro. here in a while so let my All man right. share his testimony on this nut man appreciate you for having me on that that out. okay <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, I do. I appreciate you, uh, Miss Sister Noble, for apolog apologizing. I, I accept it. I understand these things happen on YouTube. It's not the first time. This is not the last time. Um, and I know the first time that we, we kind of got with him because he was saying all kinds of stuff. I want you all to understand. At, um, Brother Up and Up has been watching me obsessively for at least at least two years before I decided to put him on my channel. Um, I knew something immediately was wrong with him um, because the nature of the emails that he sent me, when he sent me emails, it would never be two or three, four or five sentences. He would send me emails, paragraphs long. I'm talking this long every time. I mean, I, it was damn near chapters. He would never send just a simple, hey, D. Darrell, I want to come on your channel. Uh, you know, I want to give my thing about the Mississippi campaign and so forth, right? It, it was always, he would send me an email at least once every two to three months. And every time he constantly talked about, I had a hundred channels that got, when he said a hundred channels, <laughs> which I found out was kind of accurate, because there were other YouTubers when I first, um, one reason why I went in on him the way I did is because other people didn't want me on, on they didn't want me to put him on my channel. They were telling me, man, this dude is bad news. Uh, he, 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 had, he had a bigger channel back in the day. He was crazy as hell. Now, me being a therapist, because I am a, I'm a therapist, I, 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 I understand mental illness and my things, I'm not, we're trained not to, um, you know, prejudge people and kind of give them and just allow them to be themselves. And then we, you know, I'm just, just yeah. giving him the benefit yeah. of the doubt, but he, he gave these long ass he email tried. addresses, these long, long, I'm talking long. And then I finally said, okay, this brother constantly, mm -hmm. I'm going to give him a chance and just see what he's talking about. I'm just going to hear him out. So when I agreed to, to let him come on the channel, he starts sending even longer emails and so forth about, hey, we're going to talk about this. We're going to do this and that. And I let him come up. We did about two, two live streams together before Sister Noble came up. And I never forget when Sister Noble came up, I was actually at my office. I had a, I have an office in Dallas outside of Houston. I was in Dallas for the weekend when, when we, when we uh, did that live stream and the more I got to know him and so forth, the, the longer and longer these goddamn emails were. And then he started sending me all this information I never asked for. And I told the brother, I said, listen, I, I, and this is a part where I knew something was mentally wrong. And this is something I tell people who have mental illness. I say, listen, brother, um, I professionally, I advise people who have mental illness unless you have healed and, and are able to, to operate in a higher level and function, do not come online telling about talking about your mental illness. Every time he came on, he kept talking about the fact that he was in a mental institution. I know the illness that he has based on, I can't say it because, because of my ethics, we can't talk. I can't talk mental illness and diagnoses, but I know exactly what he had. And I know why he was in, in 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 the hospital for that long and the reason why is because he was a danger to himself and he was a danger to other people based on the significance of that illness and that he could not function on his own independently unless he was in like a group home or an assistant living to be honest with you the way he showed where he was living it kind of looked like he was living in an assistant living or some type of he didn't look like he was living on it. I don't know how what he's living like now, but I know when I first when he was coming on camera and I saw kind of the, the little room and all that, that that looked kind of like he was because I, I own a group home. So I know and I and I and I have clients that live in these situations that can't live on their own. And then 
remember uh Anquan, you you knew he came on and you started coming to the channel. And then yeah. when you came on the channel, Anquan, the brother sent me another long ass email about you. I what mean, did he, he say? Man, he said <laughs> all kinds of shit about you being obsessed with him. <sighs> um he said some stuff about you being LGBT. <laughs> uh, 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 then, then, then he said something about uh, you were saying he was LGBT. <sighs> and then he started saying some stuff about for like five or six years, you was following him everywhere he was going on YouTube. And man, he, he went in on, man, he did all this stuff. And I was like, and, and remember, you came up on my panel. You was like, hey, what's up? You know, I was Pan-African. We, start, we started talking about different stuff. But this dude sent me. When he saw you in the chat, he got triggered. And then he sent me this this long ass. Every time you, as a matter of fact, every time because he was watching my channel, every time he saw you in the chat, he would send me a long ass email about you. Dang. And I'm like, brother, you don't have to do that. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know. And at the time, I didn't really know you, but I was kind of like, hey, I'm gonna get his brother a chance. He seemed cool. He was respectful to me. I'm respectful to him. If you want to come on my channel and debate against Anquan, you can do that. I was calling you hardcore at the time because I didn't even know you. <laughs> he the one told me your real name because I didn't even know you called yourself. And he the one kept saying that. And so <laughs> then he started taking my content without my permission. He does that all the time. Start doing, <laughs> now, I didn't even trip on that. I ain't trip on that Play because right. I know you can do that. And he didn't really do anything to me that was... Um, not necessarily bad, but he was just taking, man, he was taking all my content. He did about 15 videos yes. about me on my content, and he cut, and I, I ain't sure, I, I kind of was like, all I asked the brother, and and I don't know what, what he promised Sister Noble at the time, but I was telling him, I said, brother, it sounds like you're trying to create a cult. I, I, I said that I don't, this little building you showing, and it's like nobody can disagree with you, I tried to tell you, man. Yes. I I said, look, I, I'm not trying to tell you you can't yes. do the Mississippi campaign. All I'm doing is telling you, look, man, I see flaws in what you're doing. You may want to tighten this up. Look, man, if you want to tell black people to move to Mississippi, I don't have a problem with that. Um, Mississippi has it's cheap to live in Mississippi. The land is cheap. There's a lot of if black people would use their minds and, and put their money together. That is an easy state. Now there's a lot of race, a lot of crazy shit in Mississippi. But if you, because I know Jackson, Mississippi is doing well. Other little places, little spots. If we were strategic, I could see something happening. But the way you do it is that you, you can't tell people if they disagree with one thing you say, then you need to get out. And, and, and from that point, and he constantly Absolutely. kept bringing up the fact that people calling him crazy. He kept bringing up the fact that he had a mental health diagnosis. He kept bringing up the fact that he, he was in, that he didn't want to take his medication. All of these things that mm -hmm. I encouraged him that he should be doing. And I don't think that he's in the proper treatment as we speak. And then when I saw mm -hmm. Sister Noble coming in and then he started doing stuff, I understand she, she, you know, he can be persuasive when he want to. He can be very fucking persuasive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing about it is yeah. the reason why he's so persuasive because he actually believed the bullshit that he's saying. And when you really believe you. it, you can persuade others. And, and so I didn't really know, because at the first I thought, I'm like, damn, I, I was thinking negative of Sister, and I didn't really know her, but this was the thing. I remember I heard mm -hmm. Sister Noble on uh, another platform. I think it was Black Woman Sphere, and she told the totality of the... Mm -hmm. That's when I kind of was like, this Negro out of his... That's when he, she sold me on that. Because when she started saying... Yeah. The stuff that he was doing, the lies, and he was doing all and that stuff, and and a lot of stuff that she was saying was consistent with certain illnesses that I I know of that he potentially could have had. And my thing is that right. only a small percentage of mental health clients, individuals stay in a hospital for that long. I'm talking okay. less than. 2% stay in the hospital long for long term. Yeah. Matter of fact, states don't want, state hospitals don't want mental, mentally ill people in the hospital that long. They really don't. And for him to have been in that for not that long, long, not long, 
either it's two things could have happened. Either he showed the ability, he he showed the inability to function on his own, or he was aggressive towards others, or he Both. was doing some regular, maybe yeah. potentially hurting himself. I don't know. I'm I'm just looking at no. speculating based on my history of understanding what keeps people in jail both. that long. So wow. it could have been both, but he was but both. The brother, yeah, was but both. the brother is was off balance. Uh, I left him alone, and I was glad he left oh. me alone because he did about I want to say in two weeks he probably did like thirty videos on me, <laughs> at least thirty. The only, I'm gonna say this, uh, Alquan. The only good thing that I don't regret is the fact that I was able to meet you and and, and kind of chop it up with you on your. That was really the only good thing because if I wouldn't have never met him. I probably wouldn't have never exactly. been able to do the debates and stuff. But the okay, brothers, well, he did one good thing, I guess. Huh? <laughs> I guess he did one good thing. Yeah, that yes. was the only good thing he did, man. Because I don't have any any good memory, any good memory. That I could have had of him, he destroyed when he took my son's ashes out of my house. See, see, this is why my mother, being a mental health nurse, and I took psychology 101, 102, and 103.